Hey guys, this is Dr. Hub. Today we'll look at the urea cycle. So we're looking at the urea cycle as well as the presence of its disorders. So in the urea cycle disorders, first we have the carbon dioxide plus the ammonia. So the CO2 plus the NH3. So CO2 plus NH3, it leads to the CP. CP stands for the carbamyl phosphate. Carbamyl phosphate, it enters a cycle. So in the cycle, we have the citrulline. So there is citrulline and citrulline it gives rise to the arginosuccinate there is arginosuccinate so after the arginosuccinate there is presence of the argin there is presence of the arginine and this arginine it leads to the presence of the ornithine there is ornithine and next the ornithine it gives rise to the citrulline so here what we need to know is the boundaries of the mitochondria. So there are two components. One is the mitochondria and the other being the cytoplasm. So in the cytoplasm, we are dealing with the liver. So under the mitochondria, there can be the presence of the ornithine as well as there can be the presence of the citrulline. So we are cutting it in between. So that's where this process takes place. So there are other things leading to the carbamyl phosphate. So in the conversion of the CO2 plus NH3, so there is uh, two ATPs. Let's change the color. There is two ATP. And the two ATP, it gives rise to the two ADP. So two ATP gives rise to the two ADP along with the PI. And on the other hand, there is uh, involvement of the CPS1. So there is presence of the CPS1. So this is CPS1, that is a carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1. So what is leading to the CPS1? The CPS1 is led by the N-acetyl glutamate. So it is presence of the N-acetyl glutamate. So this N-acetyl glutamate is nothing but there is an allosteric activator. It is a allosteric activator. So the defect in this that is a cps1 what is it leading to so the cps1 defect is going to be the hyper ammonemia type 1 so it is a hyper ammonemia so it is a hyper ammonemia and it is nothing but the type 1 next is we look at the the conversion of the ornithine to the citrulline so let's clear it and write it in detail. So when you're looking at the ornithine, ornithine is converted to the citrulline. So when the ornithine is converted to the citrulline, as we spoke, this takes place in the mitochondria. So there is uh, the addition of carbamyl phosphate as well. And in this step, there is presence of the ornithine transcarbamylase. So there is presence of the ornithine. This is nothing but the trans carbamylase. So in the ornithine trans carbamylase, it this uh, the defect here it leads to the triplet syndrome. So it leads to the HHH syndrome. So this will be defect in the ornithine trans carbamylase. The next step where we saw the citrulline being converted to the arginosuccinate. We are writing it as AS. And in this step, this presence of an A that is a aspartate. So this is aspartate. And this is going to be arginosuccinate. Arginosuccinate. So in this step, there is, as we discussed, there is presence of the ATP to the AMP plus PPI. The other enzyme which is included is the arginosuccinate synthase. There is ASS, arginosuccinate synthase. So what happens when there is a defect to the uh, ASS? So ASS, the defect is, it is going to be citrullemia. Citrullemia. A small correction, in case of the ornithine trans carbamylase, the defect is not the triple H, it is known as the hyperammonemia type 2. 
so it is nothing but the hyper ammonemia this is hyper ammonemia type 2 okay so the triple h is uh, actually considered with the ornithin permeus we'll do it later so as far as we know now we saw the conversion of ornithin to citrulline and this conversion is brought by the ornithin transcarbamylase the defect here is nothing but the hyper ammonemia type 2 then we saw the citrulline being converted to the arginosuccinate so citrulline being converted to the arginosuccinate in presence of the arginosuccinate synthase and this has the addition of the aspartate and there is also atp2 amp plus the pi so next step will be the arginosuccinate so let's look at as that is the arginosuccinate being converted to the arginine so the arginosuccinate being converted to the arginine there is a addition of the arginosuccinase so there is also a byproduct here the arginosuccinate to the arginine there's a byproduct being the fumarate so what is the defect of the as the arginosuccinate the defect here is uh, the arginosuccinate aciduria defect is the arginosuccinate arginosuccinate aciduria next is we look at the arginine being converted to the ornithine so next in line we have the arginine being converted to the ornithine so in this stage the arginine converted to the ornithine there is presence of the arginase there is presence of the arginase and what is happening in the arginase is there is the h2o there is h2o being converted to urea and there is h2o which is going through this step and the byproduct being the urea this goes to the kidney the next step is a very small step that is the ornithin is the ornithin to the ornithin this is a transition between the cytoplasm to that of the mitochondria so we have the ornithin to the ornithin so there is ornithin to the ornithin so here the enzyme being the ornithin permeus so there is ornithin this presence of ornithin permeus and the defect in the ornithin permeus is going to be the triple h syndrome so this is where the triple h syndrome takes place the other thing is let's look at the structure of urea this is also very important so when you're looking at the structure of urea what we need to know is there is the ammonia that is nh3 is contributing to the structure of nh2 then there is co2 which is contributing to the c double bond o and there is also aspartate it is contributing to the other nh2 so this is the structure of the urea so other thing to notice the amino acid catabolism it results in the formation of common metabolites so amino acid catabolism there's common metabolites such as the pyruvate as well as the acetyl coa so they serve as the metabolic fuels so they are nothing but the metabolic fuels and the excess nitrogen generated by this process is converted to the urea and excreted by the kidneys so if you look at the extra there is a extra nitrogen so the extra nitrogen which is generated in the process are converted to the urea so they are nothing but it is converted to the urea and it is excreted the excretion is by the presence of the kidney so by the kidney they are excreted